Hello YouTubers, Alaska Prepper here. I thought I'd show you guys what's going to be part of my soon-to-be homestead. As you know, I'm not homesteading yet, but I'm hoping to start next year. So I've gathered a few things that I know I'm going to need next year, and this is one of them. This is a 2,500 gallon water tank, and it's sitting on some skids right now, or some pallets, and it's gonna stay there over winter. I'm not gonna hook it up this year, because there's a lot of work to be done, believe it or not, to this tank before I can fill it up with water and actually hook it up to my other tanks that are under my house. Now, like I said, this is a 2,500 gallon water tank. And in addition to that 2,500 gallons that this tank will hold, many of you that have been with me for a while know that under my house, I have a 1,000 gallon system. So altogether, I will have 3,500 gallons of water. I would say that at any one time, I would have at least 3,000 gallons of water once I set this tank up and it's full of water. Now, obviously, it's not going to stay sitting there when I fill it up with water. I'm going to move it to the opposite side of my house where it will be hidden from the road. There's a perfect little spot there that I'm going to have leveled out next year with gravel and stone so that I can lay it on there and then do all of the things that need to be done to it. As many of you probably know, in Alaska it can get up to negative 60 degrees in the winters. The coldest that I've ever seen it living here where I am at now is negative 42. The reason for that is because where we live is usually about 10 degrees warmer than down in the city. So here, about negative 42 is the coldest we've ever seen it. Usually averages about negative 30 to negative 35, the coldest part of our winters here. What I'm going to do to this tank, and you'll see me do it next year, but a quick explanation to winterize it is this. I'm going to wrap this tank with about 3 inches of styrofoam. Once I wrap it with 3 inches of styrofoam, I'm going to hire someone to come out here and spray an additional three inches all the way around the tank and on top of the tank leaving the manhole open being the only part of the tank that will be exposed to the elements however while i'm not using it i'm going to make sure that i have some insulation on top of that as well through a hole on the top i'm going to insert a well pump that will be going into my house or under my house connecting to both of the tanks that I already have under my house. That way, whenever I want to fill one of those two tanks, because they're getting empty, being that those tanks are the ones that feed my house directly, whenever I want to fill them, all I have to do is turn on a switch and flip a valve, and I'll be able to fill them from this tank. That means that next year, instead of me filling those tanks individually from my driveway, I will always only have to fill up this tank, and I will be able to pull from this tank to fill my other tanks. That's the plan. Probably easier said than done, but I'll find out next year how heavy of a labor it's going to be to accomplish that task. Now, ladies and gentlemen, before I show you guys my power bank and how it's turned out, which I think it turned out pretty well, I wanted to go ahead and explain something to you guys real quick. I've gotten a few comments uh, from people not being not being nasty or anything like that uh, and I, I love my community members because of this saying ap you sound so negative all of a sudden and i wanted to explain to you all why it is that maybe in the last few videos that i've done especially the videos where i read an article of what's going on in our in our country and around the world why i have sounded a little bit angry and maybe even a bit pessimistic all right ladies and gentlemen so I am not that talented of a narrator to just go ahead and remember everything that I want to tell you without messing it up. So I actually took the time to write it down. So I'm going to read to you guys about a one and a half minute essay, I guess you can call it, that I took the time to write down to explain to you guys why it is that I feel that we still have hope here in America. There is still hope for this country. I want those of you that think that I don't think that there is hope, I do. But it's for a very different reason than what some people may think. 
But to tell you why it is that I get upset sometimes when I'm reading some of these articles or I'm talking about what's going on in the country, it's because, ladies and gentlemen, I'm pretty set. I'm pretty well set. There's no such thing as a prepper that is completely prepped for anything that can happen. But I feel that I'm pretty well hedged against a lot of things, and I'm pretty well prepped. And when I'm reading articles like the last one that I read, I'm thinking about some of our community members that may be not as prepped. I'm thinking about some of the people that I know that when the system collapses, and what I mean about the system, I mean about the monetary system in particular, that when it collapses, how hurt they're going to be. And when I'm reading that, I'm thinking of that inside my head, and it makes me emotional. Because I know that a lot of people are going to get hurt. Like I said, I feel that I'm pretty well hedged. And as long as you feel that you're pretty well hedged against anything that can happen, that you're pretty well prepped, then that's a great thing for you. But I know that from a lot of emails and from reading a lot of comments, I know that that may not be the case for everyone. And I'm sure that that is not the case for everyone. And that's why sometimes I feel or I sound like I'm angry or upset. In a way, it's because I really am. Because I'm thinking about those that are going to suffer more than those that are not. So I hope you understand that sometimes when I go off on a bit of a tyrant, that's why. It's because I've truly grown to care about the AP community. right? And... There's a person that left a comment on my Patreon page that really woke me up to that. And I want you all to know that that I'm not trying to scare anyone or make you feel like there's no hope. I titled this essay, I Have Hope for These United States of America. As you know, this channel promotes preparedness. Therefore, it is difficult to keep the content positive all the time. Because as a prepper, I look for those things that may impact our way of life and then try to project onto you what I see coming and why it is that we need to prepare. A very good friend that has been part of the AP community for a long time sent me a message that read something like this. AP, you seem to be getting so negative. I remember when you always had a positive outlook. After reading that comment, I thought to myself, it's amazing in how sync our community is because I'm actually working on a video, which was this one, ladies and gentlemen, to let you all know that with all that is going on in our country, there is still hope because even in the darkest of times, there is always a glimmer of light, but only if you look for it. This is why I feel that there is still hope for our great nation. Because our nation is not just a mass of land, but more importantly, it is a mass of people, good people. Not white people, not black people, not brown people, not green, blue, or pink. Just people who all have to drink, eat, sleep, and love. It is the people of this country, in its current and past generations, that have made it the nation that is the best nation on earth. This, ladies and gentlemen, is why so many others from so many other countries aspire to be part of our tribe, these United States of America. My parents knew before they immigrated here that in America they would have an opportunity to live a good and wholesome life, an opportunity to raise a family and have a shot at the American dream, where the outcome may not be guaranteed but the opportunity is. There is hope for America, now more than ever, because the masses are finally waking up to the corruption that so many try to bring to light, but so many cannot see. We will overcome this crisis like we've overcome so many other challenges that have occurred throughout our history. After darkness, there will be light, and after winter, there will be spring. In America, you have the opportunity to become whatever you aspire to be. You have the right to love whomever you love. You are able to marry whomever your heart tells you to. You are able to express yourself, which is very important because without the freedom of expression, there is no innovation. 
you are able to pray to your God and not be worried about being persecuted because your God is not the same God as someone else's. In America, your rights are not given to you by the government. Instead, you are born with your rights, which are protected by a constitution. A constitution that, although under attack, has done a great job thus far of protecting us from totalitarianism. Our forefathers did a great job in creating this document. We will overcome this crisis with our dignity. So be hopeful and stay hopeful, but be prepared. Ladies and gentlemen, I feel that one of our most patriotic duties is to be critical of our government, to question their actions so that we don't end up in a country like those that people are fleeing from. Because if we do end up like one of those countries, then where do we go? We may have our problems, but in my opinion, this is the greatest country on earth. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so what you see here is my 9200 watt hour power station. I'm going to tell you what it's all made of. You've seen most of these items already, with the exception of the external AGM batteries that I purchased. So if you look at the bottom right left hand corner, you'll see that there's three batteries that look like car batteries. Now those are deep cycle AGM batteries that each come with 1320 watt hours. Those batteries are deep cycle which means that we can drain them all the way down to 20% without really damaging the battery. To the right of that you're going to see my Go Zero Yeti expansion battery which you have seen in the past and that battery has the capacity of 1250 watt hours. On top of that you see my Yeti 1000 which has a capacity of 1045 watt hours and to the left hand corner on that top shelf over there you see my Blue Yeti which you have seen before that has a capacity of 2400 watt hours. Now to the right of that we've got the little Rockman 200 that has a capacity of 230 watt hours and the all powers solar generator that has a capacity of 372 watt hours so it's roughly a little bit over 9000 watt hours altogether so what I'm gonna do with this ladies and gentlemen is eventually I'm gonna go ahead and hardwire the goal zero to some outlets throughout the house where I can plug in my refrigerator my freezer and my Toyo stove now I did a little bit of math to tell you exactly what I can run and for how long during a power outage. Now the numbers that I'm going to give you are going to be from my refrigerator freezer, the one that I have in my kitchen, my stand-up freezer, and both of my Toyo heaters. Those are the appliances that I am mostly concerned with during a power, power outage that lasts a few hours, if not more. So if the electric were to go out, I would be able to run my refrigerator my stand-up freezer and both of my Toyo heaters for a total of 36 hours. And this is not just me plugging numbers into a spreadsheet. This is me having actually tested them out. I tested out my refrigerator freezer with my Blue Eddy and it ran for 12 hours with no problem with still about 40% of the battery capacity left. My Toyo, I've run for 8 hours before off of my Yeti Goal Zero or my Goal Zero Yeti. And it ran all night about 8 hours with about 40% or so of the battery left. So if I had to run my Toyo heaters with my freezer and my refrigerator just on this power, I would be able to run it for 36 hours. Now that's not 36 hours straight. That's taking into consideration that I would only run my refrigerator and my freezer for 4 hours at a time. So if I run them for 4 hours at a time and run my Toyo stoves full time, I'll be able to power those things with this battery bank for a day and a half. AP, what's your plan if the power outage is out for longer than that? Good question. My plan is to go ahead and hook up my big generator, the one that I showed you on a few videos ago, hook it up to the house, and while I'm running everything in the house, at the same time I would be charging this power station. 
This power station probably take about 10 hours or so to charge fully. So I would have a line coming in from my generator in addition to the line that's going into my house and powering all of these devices at the same time that I'm using my generator, getting the most use out of the gasoline that I'm using. Now I figure that if I run my generator for about eight or nine hours, it's gonna use up anywhere between three to four gallons of gasoline, which is not bad. So if I have 50 gallons of gasoline put aside and I had to do this, I could probably do it for a full month before I ran out of gasoline and keeping the things that I need powered, powered up. If you have any suggestions or recommendations, go ahead and put them on there because I'm always willing to learn. As you can see, this is a work in progress. I'm actually truly considering getting another Blue Eddy so that I can put in my studio once I build it next year. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining in. If, if you guys want to take a look at the Gold Zero or the Blue Eddy or the Rockman or the All Powers, you guys know that you can find those items in my Amazon storefront. And for those of you that have purchased some of these things through my link, I truly do appreciate the support. Thanks again for joining in today, ladies and gentlemen. Remember to be good to each other. When good people do good things, good things happen. Remember to reach one, teach one, and repeat. If we all did this, the world would be a better place, and you know that it will be a better place. Many blessings to every one of you and your families. This is Alaska Prepper, and I'm out.